In this video we're going to take a look at returning values from functions in Python. Let's start from this program we had before, but I'm going to get rid of all these lines that I put in just to elucidate what's happening here exactly. Let's just delete all of these. So this function greet, clearly, I'll get rid of that as well, it accepts a name and then it prints a greeting. But another possibility would be to have a function creating a greeting and then returning it so you can use it however you want. I'll show you what I mean. Let's create another function. I'll call this create greeting and that will also accept a name. Let's put pass in for the moment because I like my code to always be syntactically correct while I'm typing it. So if I create some kind of statement like this that has a body, but I don't know what I want to put in it yet. I use the pass keyword so that it is syntactically correct while I'm writing the rest of the code. And by the way, you can't have two functions with the same name in Python. Or better said, more accurately, you can't have two functions with the same name in the same scope. Because just like variables have a scope, functions also have a scope. They have a region in which they exist. That's like physically a region of your code. So within this file here, I can't create two functions called greet, for example. Some programming languages let you do that. As long as functions have different parameters, so you could have a greet that accepts a name and a greet that doesn't accept a name, some programming languages let you do that, but Python doesn't. In Python, you can't have two functions with the same name. You can't have two greet functions in this file, for example. Okay, so this greet function, clearly it creates a greeting. That's creating one string, actually using the name in this case, and then it's printing it. But we could instead have a function which creates the greeting and then just gives it back to us so we can do what we want with it. So we create the greeting like this. Let's say, I'll actually use different text just to make it a bit clearer. Let's say, hi, and then plus name. That's creating a single string from two separate strings. So this string and this string. But what I want to do is write return here and then a space. So we've got return and then we've got some value that we want to return to whichever function calls this. And I'll show you how we use this. So here we can say greeting equals create greeting and then we have to pass this function a name because it has a parameter here. Then I can print that. Let's print greeting. Let's see what this does. So we get hi John. This hi John is coming out from here. So what this return does is it means you can then use a construct like this. So I can create a variable and assign it to the return value of the function, which is this. This is the thing that's returned from the function. Returning in this context, it just means giving back to whichever function called this. And that's the main function. So we get something back here in the main function from create greeting. This can be confusing to beginners because it looks as though we are assigning some value to the function, like we're setting this equal to a function. That's not what we're doing. We've already seen the same thing when we use the input function. We're actually assigning this variable to the return value of this function. And the return value is defined by this return keyword here, which returns this. We don't have to pass parameters to a function that has a return value. So I could do this. Let's say def create simple greeting, no parameters, there's a colon, and I could just say return hi there. And that works in the same kind of a way. So let's say here simple greeting, 
that's just a variable that I've just made up, equals create simple greeting and then print simple greeting. So if you run this, we're going to get hi there. And another thing that sometimes confuses beginners is notice that just because you return something, that doesn't print it. We have to print it ourselves. We all do whatever we like with it. We can do whatever we like with the return value of a function. And you can see that you can think of functions in computer programming, or for that matter also in mathematics, as kind of like a sort of black box. You can pass some data into the box, although you don't have to, it just depends what the box does. And the box then processes the data somehow, or does something, and it can give you some data back. It doesn't necessarily give you data back, doesn't necessarily return anything, but it can do. So in this case, here, it's as though we've taken some data, passed it to this create greeting machine or box or whatever you want to call it, of course it's a function, and that then processes the data somehow like this, and it returns it, so you end up with this. But notice at no stage here is the original variable name actually changed. This is simply creating some new data and returning it. So try out these examples for yourself and I think you'll see how this is working. You definitely want to type out this code and see what it actually does. Some people feel this is fairly clear fairly early on, but other people are definitely confused by this. So it's definitely worth typing it out and verifying that this does work how you expect it to work. You've been watching a free sample from my Python and Machine Learning for Complete Beginners course. I'm uploading enough videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python and Machine Learning. The full course is absolutely massive. If you're interested in it, please click the link in the description. The complete course covers not only basic Python, but also some fairly advanced Python, even some desktop programming stuff, and then goes on to machine learning and artificial intelligence. Until next time, happy coding.